You've just tuned in to the Byron Cage Show featuring Super Dave. Stay right here to watch topics that are relevant to today's issues and the opposites, which tackle subject matters from two different perspectives. Celebrity interviews, life-changing information from some of the leading health and medical professionals, and live performances. It's the Byron Cage Show. Come on, let's praise him together in this place. Giving you all the glory. Come on, y'all sing it. Hallelujah. This is the day that you've made, Lord. We will rejoice and we will be glad in it. Happy to be in the house of the Lord. Giving you the praise tonight. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, let's sing it together. You ready to say this? Lord, we glorify you. And we lift you, Jesus. Serving you, Lord. It's a privilege. Come on and say it to a man. And we lift you, Jesus. Serving you, Lord. How many of us are privileged to serve him? Come on, say it again to him. And we lift you, Jesus. Serving you, Lord. It's a privilege. Come on and tell him one more time. And we lift you, Jesus. Serving you, Lord. Let's take it up and sing it like this, listen. From the rising of the sun, thank you, Jesus, until the sun is long gone. Thank you, Lord, for your worthy of praise. Yes, you, I think I'll praise you all my days. But we glorify you, and we lift you, Jesus, serving you, Lord. It's a privilege to bless you. Come on, lift your voice and tell them. And we lift you, Jesus. Serving you, Lord. Come on, ladies, sing it together. Glory.
show featuring my main man super dave you yeah, every time we come in we try to inspire we uh, we try to educate and bring topics that we know are important uh, to our community and to our country and one such topic is something that has affected us now for almost two years and that is the pandemic being COVID 19 and uh, I'm, i know dave there's been all kind of talk of people saying do i get the vaccine do i not get the vaccine and um, i always say i would rather have it not need it than to need it and not have it because mm -hmm. um, you know we know that the virus is, is very very serious and has taken millions of people's lives and uh, millions and millions of people have, have gotten sick with COVID nineteen and and um, you know it's just been a really trying and taxing two years for us. Um, so I, I've got a special um, amazing doctor that's going to jump on in just a minute because hopefully she can convince you to get your vaccine. I don't think she will. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I just I have to stand on the side of you know just taking my chances from a natural position. I don't take aspirin. I don't take cold medicine. This ain't just something that I'm just like, all of a sudden, I'm going to stop taking things. No, I've always been like this. So I respect anybody that says, man, you take da-da-da-da-da. Why are you worried about this? Okay, I hear you, but I'm not like that, period, mm -hmm. across the board. I do a lot of holistic things, things mm -hmm. like that. And I feel like I could, I, I could survive it. You know, I know the Omicron is out. It's a lot stronger. I hear a lot of talks about that. And I'm not anti-vax. Mm -hmm. I just think you should do what's best for you. And if you have underlying conditions, from what I read, I believe you should get it. Mm -hmm. You know, so I don't think it's not something that people should get, particularly. I just personally don't mm -hmm. think it's something for me. And I think people should have the right to have that choice mm -hmm. to say yay or nay to it and not be forced upon or looked down upon because they decide not to get vaccinated. Yeah, and, and my thing is this. If we have medical experts or doctors and scientists who study this mm -hmm. and they put it under the microscope and say this is a problem. Um, I want to always make sure I do due diligence with, with my health because I am older and um, I, so for me, that's the reason why I got it. But let's bring in uh, Dr. Sharon Adi right now, an incredible physician. Yes, she does wonderful things for our community. Hey, Dr. Sharon, how are you? Hi, wonderful, glad to be here. Good to see you. Oh, hopefully you can, and, you can uh, impress upon my friend, you know, <laughs> something that you can say to make him go get that shot. Cause I've had both of mm -hmm. uh, the, um, uh, Moderna's and the booster. I, I've got it all, you know? So that's why the getting on planes and all that kind of stuff, I, I have to. I'm not going to play in my life like that. Yep. So, so what you, you heard uh, Super Dave, uh, Dr. Adi, you know, mm -hmm. and what his position is. What, what's your position as a medical professional? Well, one thing that stood out to me that Super Dave said was, I feel like I can fight it. And I can't tell you the number of persons that have died feeling like they can fight it and begging doctors in the ICU to give me the shot, you know, I should have given the shot. And I think you also have to look at beyond ourselves. If you are sick, most people, most, I'll say most, unless you're independently a billionaire, gazillionaire, but most regular folk, if you are ill and there is something called COVID long-term, as you think, oh, I'll have a virus, I'll get over it. No, we are seeing memory loss. We're seeing issues with kidneys. We're seeing all of these things that keep going on and on and on because it is a new virus and we don't know the long-term effects of you being infected and severely impacted by COVID. So it's not just you, it's your family. If you are a father, Super Dave, what happens when your children wake up and there is no daddy and this was a preventable illness. Um, and and I, I just have to say, even from the medical profession, we were the first lining up. And even those outliers, there is a dentist that's 51 years old that has left four children, now fatherless, a non-working wife, uh, and a dental practice and all of his patients because he said, oh, I want to wait and blah, 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 got COVID and perfect jogger all that dead. So I say an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Vaccines are prevention. Prevention from mm -hmm. dying? Do they prevent from 
the things that you named, like the kidney failures, they don't stop those underlying conditions. I oh, about. excellent. Excellent. Actually, prevention from you getting a virus. And if you get the virus, prevention from long-term effects that are negative of the virus. Now, nothing is 100%. I, I would ask you, do you wear a seatbelt? Because honestly, that's an invasion of your privacy in your car. Why do you wear a seatbelt? Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, you don't have accidents every day. No. All right. But you could have an accident and it could be detrimental or you could not be wearing a seatbelt and make it. I just don't believe in Russian roulette. And then persons that are all saying, oh, I'm waiting on the data. I'm waiting on the data. This is the most studied vaccine in the history of the world. And so unless you are growing your own food, unless you are not taking any processed food, doing anything outside of staying in your corner and chanting, that doesn't wash with me at all. It, it just doesn't. And, and now we get to the point of not only is it you, not only is it your family, but my mother is 81 years old. If you get COVID, and yes, yeah, she's vaccinated and boosted, but because of age and other issues, if you get COVID and you're highly... Uh, infectious, you now, by being in the presence of my mother, now are coming at my family by putting at risk. And 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 that's that's where we are. I don't believe in blaming people and shaming people and all of that. I believe, look at the evidence, trust the evidence. And people say, I want to do my own research. Unless you are a PhD or an MD and have done a dissertation, how are you going to research the data with, with this uh, most of us have trouble researching all the data, and we are highly trained. Right, right. And, and, and most conspiracy theories that people have, um, you cannot uh, compete with the fact that this, hands down, probably is the worst pandemic worldwide ever in the history worldwide. of our country and of the world. You know, because uh, explain to people, Dr. Ida, if you can, why this is not the flu. Because people try to compare it to the flu, or it's just like the common cold or a sinus infection. Mm -hmm. But kind of explain mm -hmm. so the average person well, can really. It is not. And we have, we deal with the flu. We deal with cold. We deal with other viruses, uh, sinus infections. We deal with those things and we try to do the best we can now, but this is, again, we know flu deaths, actually we play off flu, but we know that peace people, thousands and thousands of people will die from flu this year. Um, it really is something that is highly contagious and we still are studying. Now, what Dave says is absolutely true. We don't know everything about COVID. We don't know everything about the flu. We don't know everything about herpes. All of those are viruses. And you continue to look and push. But we do know that vaccines are safe and now safe in children. Uh, and they are highly scrutinized. And again, an ounce of prevention. How often do we well, much prevention? worth a two week hospital stay and what that will do to your family and to you in the long term. Absolutely. Good. How, how often do you have to admit to get the shot? Because if I'm not understanding, doesn't it wean within six months or seven months? Don't you have to keep getting the shot moving forward? Won't this be I did not hear that question well. He, he, he was asking, he was saying that uh, is, will you have to have the shot again like in six months? As it suggested, okay. you'll have to keep getting boosted and all that kind of stuff until the pandemic is gone. And then the question is, will the pandemic ever be gone for COVID-19? Yeah, so my biggest question would be when it's post, mm -hmm. you know, problem, will we continue to have to be vaccinated because now we're dependent on that vaccine? This is what we know. And number one, with all of COVID, I will be the physician that tells you and the scientist that tells you all the time, we don't know everything. But we know this with the natural course of vaccines. When you have COVID, or you are vaccinated against COVID, your antibodies shoot up. We know over time they start to go down and it's time to now to get your boost to go back up, all right? Same thing really happens if you're infected with COVID. Your natural immunity, if you're infected, you have some protection, but then that quickly goes down. That's why you cannot depend on solely natural immunity. Will we be boosted or get um, continued vaccines, we do not know. But at the same time that this is happening, we are, as a country, as a world, getting what has been in the media and misrepresented it has herd immunity. So what we do know now is take your uh, vaccine, whether it's one dose or the two, and a booster, and 
uh, follow the Centers for Disease Control guidelines, I do suspect that we are going to have another booster. But has, has the virus progressed? More people have been exposed. And we do get what some what people call herd immunity, although that's been grossly misrepresented in the media. And so we know that this is ever changing. Thankfully, praise God, the rates of COVID transmission are lowering and the rates of death are lowering. But it's not just the vaccine. The vaccine is primary, but there are also better ways to treat COVID. There are also now ways that you treat if you get infected with COVID that you're able to take something to help you keep from getting hospitalized. Mm. Those kind of advances only come through science, through dedication, and certainly has a woman of faith prayer. But we know that the first physicians were priests. We know that medicine started in religion. And so it is not one or the other. And I want to say that, Minister Cage, to your audience, it's not one or the other. I believe the vaccine was divinely inspired. And I believe that it is a way for us to get hold of um, this pandemic and, and, and learn for the next pandemic. So yes, succinctly, I believe that you probably will have to have another uh, boost or vaccine but I don't believe that it's going to be perpetual for the rest of your life. Every six months, you're getting a COVID vaccine. No. Okay, absolutely. Thank you so much. And, and you guys, please take what Dr. Adi is saying seriously, because, you know, it, it's unfortunate that, you know, fathers or mothers have to leave their families because yes. uh, they didn't want to be vaccinated. And, and obviously, they had to succumb to something like that. It's mm. very, very serious. So sometimes, especially if you have a family, you have to think of, of more than just yourself. You have yeah. to think of those <laughs> that are around you and that those that love you. So, uh, Dr. Adi, tell everybody how they can get in contact with you via social media. I know people may have questions. You find me on Facebook, Sharon Allison Adi, O-T-T-E-Y, or Dr. Sharon online. I'm also Dr. Sharon A-O on Twitter. Y'all can find me, just Google it, O-T-T-E-Y. And certainly, Minister Cage and I are friends, go on any of her sites. But yes, and I do answer my own questions and talk about in a real way, you know, Minister Cage, my thing is this, I can use all the big medical school words and, and shock you all with science and nobody will know a darn thing I'm saying. I like to keep it real and simple. And with that, get vaccinated, get your entire family vaccinated, get boosted, wear your mask, wash your hands, and let's get this under control. You heard it, you guys, right here from Dr. Adi, right here on the Byron Cage Show. Thank you so much, Dr. Adi. Love you, Dr. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Thank you. Just cause I talk about Jesus don't mean I need Jesus pieces I've been fighting against these demons like it's demon season I've been sinning without repenting, I gotta fix my life now I've been sitting all in my feelings, I gotta switch the lifestyle Sick of the sulking and all of the talking without ever putting no action The way that I'm living is blocking the vision, I'm blinded by all the distractions God been showing me grace, when I be this loyal, he's still being true to me That's why every time that I be falling away, he never stop using me I got a Bible and don't even read it, he made me a leader and I don't be leading I don't even know how I'm even still breathing cause I know the purpose, but I don't achieve it. My friends and my family steady retreating. I push them away and get mad when they leaving. I don't go to therapy knowing I need it. I know my mistakes, but I steady repeat it. But I can't, I can't fall in traps. The weapon that's formed against me, catching me slipping when I don't be strapped. It's difficult trying to resist it whenever he's sitting it right in my lap. The enemy setting the trap, trying to get me off the map. And I can't, I can't, I can't fall in traps. Hey everybody, welcome back. It's Byron Cage at the Byron Cage Show with Super Dave in the house. Listen, y'all, I am so excited to have this guest with us on my show on today. Uh, he is no stranger to the entertainment the OG. industry. An OG. I mean, he's a native from Chicago, Illinois, has done so many things. A lot of the generation, people, younger people may not know uh, him because you weren't old enough to watch uh, some of the songs or some of the TV shows and the movies that he's done. But you played PlayStation 2 and PlayStation 3. Man, yes. And there was the voiceovers that this man did, you all. Uh, you all remember him, man. He was incredible. Uh, not was. He is, is. an incredible Absolutely. actor, an incredible entertainer. Absolutely. I'm talking about my friend, my brother, T.C. Carson is in the house. What's up, my brother? Hey, what's going on, fellas? What's going on? Big man, respect, so sir. glad to have you, man. So yes, glad sir. to have you, man. Your, your career has spanned for decades, and... Um, you know, what, what do you think is the longevity of T.C. Carson and, and why you still remain uh, relevant even today? Uh, for, for me, it is really about working to be as authentic as I can be. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Uh, we're given these platforms 
not for us, but so that we can make a difference, make an impact. And so hopefully, I'm, I'm hoping people see the things that I do as me pushing my culture, me working to do, to be a, the best artist I can be. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. How was it? I got a huge question. I'm a huge fan of yours, by the way. So geeking out a little bit because you're one of my OG icons. I definitely follow your work a lot. How did you, do you still remember the day you worked on The Wiz, man? Oh, yeah. Like to, like to the T, huh? That was oh, yeah, iconic well, to me for you. It was a job that I had gotten um, as a chorus member. Yes, and sir. the first day of rehearsal, I chipped a bone in my foot doing uh, a jump. And so I had to leave the show. Mm. Jump cut to the last kind of couple of weeks of the show. Yes, sir. The person who played the scarecrow had to leave. They called me back in to come and do the lead. Nice. Wow. Amazing. Uh, yeah, I, I, and I was a scarecrow in the Wiz in my high school production. Nice. But we, we didn't have Michael Jackson yet. He, he didn't, <laughs> you can win, child. With, nah. they, I had to say, <laughs> I was born on Ooh. the mm -hmm. day before yesterday. I mean, that that production was so incredible. Man. Yeah, my homeboys would let me do play back in the day. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, they wouldn't let me let that down. Yeah, Not where yeah. I was from. <laughs> <laughs> you would have been a on the stage. You know man, they wouldn't even let me do that. Give me some of your earlier work, Seth, when you first started. What are some of the first things that you did uh, in the industry? Um, music was the first thing I did. I started singing in grade school. Uh, fourth grade, I had a very progressive fourth grade teacher, and we had an assembly. And he wanted his class to sing Aquarius. And I did the lead in Aquarius. and the response I got kind of pushed me kind of where I'm going today. Wow, wow, man, that's incredible. And, and you also, as a singer, man, you put out a record, uh, a jazz collection CD called The Truth. And uh, mm -hmm. talk about that. What's, what's the passion behind that particular CD? Truth is a, um, it's a snapshot. It's a snapshot into what my life was at that time. Okay. Uh, myself and Andre Simone, we took a year to write and we just, you know, got together once a week and we just kind of dealt with what we were dealing with at the time. So a lot of everything on truth is about where I was at that moment in time of the experiences I was going through. Now, what, what, what was experience like for you when you, you were the voice of Samuel? Kids, are y'all ready for this? For the PBS animated series called Clifford the Big Red Dog. <laughs> what, what, what was the voice? Give, give us that voice that you, that you used to do. Um, he was he was of island descent, mm. and you know my island people they would you know talk about me so bad because my accent was so bad. <laughs> <laughs> so bad. But as kids, you know they don't know. Yeah, mm. you know. But my friends would be like, "Man, <laughs> you rock, Scott. You think you sound like a people?" <laughs> right. right. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, I don't know if people realize that you also were the voiceover for Samuel L. Jackson for um, the Star Wars? Um, not for Samuel L. Jackson, but we both uh, voiced Mace Windu. Mace Windu, yes. yes. Mace, that's that's what, what it was. was. Yeah, yes. That's what it was, yes. Absolutely. Yes. absolutely. I know about that, yes. Yeah, now, now we, we got to give your fraternity a shout out, Iota Phi Theta. Of course, that's right, that's course, right. I'm Capo, that's of course, right. you know oh, but, yeah. but it's all good. It's all good. But now, the most important thing I think that people really, really want to talk about is your character as Kyle Barker on the hit Fox show uh, that was called Living Single. Living Single. How did you like working on How iconic was it being on that set? Y'all yeah. revolutionized TV, man. Absolutely. And they're not giving you your credit. We already know what we're talking about. But y'all changed the game for a lot of different situations in the entertainment. We all know the story. But how did you feel with, with creating that iconic situation? Well, I don't think we understood. We didn't know that it was going to have the longevity it had. We did know that it was important, um, that those images were important in our community. So we did know, understand that. And it just felt like a continuation. Uh, you yes. had the Cosby show, then you had Different World. Mm -hmm. And to me, living single was like the next alliteration of that journey yes, for young Black people. Mm -hmm. And I was a young Black person growing up in that time of living single, you know, at its peak. 
you know, I'm only 39, so at that time I was, you know, coming through high school, college, things like that. You definitely were a good image. You and your your partner in crime, uh, Ovi. Uh, what was his? What's his? Um, <laughs> forgive me for forgetting his name. What's his real name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But o Overton. Don Overton. Hinton. Overton. Yes, Don him. You guys were just a good image to see. You know, I felt good, intellectual black man like yourself being on TV. You know, you had your own style, you had your own attitude. You didn't change it, and I loved it. I loved it all the way through. And it definitely was something for me that I can recall that I say I was proud to see because I had an image I could go see for myself other than different than what they were putting out on the media for us. So yeah, that, and not to mention the, the energy between thank you and Maxine's you, character, you. man. That. You, you guys were like on fire every week. Everybody was just like, God, we want to yeah. see because you were coming in with that dirty voice and everybody. Was, ah. And it was an awesome black couple. Like it was, it was just really awesome to see that relationship was just awesome. You know, absolutely. are you guys still friends? Like, what's your relationship in real oh, life with Maxine? Absolutely. Those we're family. Like, and I think yes, that sir. was one of the biggest things about the show. You felt the love that we had for each other because we all really do love each other. Yes, sir. We really, yes, sir. you know, to this day we have a, a text chain where we check in on each other. And you know, nice. I talk nice. to Eric. I talk to Kim all the time. That's dope. That's dope. Definitely a Kim fan too. I love all this cast. Yeah, they yeah. nice. So, what was one of your favorite episodes? If you had to just pick one that you said, man, this was the one that was just hands down the best episode of the series. I can't tell you a best episode of the series because they were all, you know, when I go, I didn't really watch the show when we were doing it. First year, the first season, I kind of watched just to make sure that it was what I was working to to be. And then after that, I didn't watch the show until I got off the show. Got you, got you. Now, how did you like working? Because you and I have this in common. I was on the very first episode of Greenleaf on OWN. And uh, mm -hmm. I, I played the, the choir director, and I was directing that first song that I had to do a series of concerts in Ghana, so I couldn't stay to do the rest of it. But you know, I know you had a character on, on that show as well. Uh, how did you like working on that? Because that show, to me, was phenomenal. Um, it, was, it, it was a wonderful working experience. Uh, Lynn and everybody, just really nice, mm -hmm. uh, great actors. Um, I think it was an important storyline. I, I was sad that they didn't really investigate it. Mm -hmm. But you know, um, yeah. it is what it is. Yeah, and I, I did not want to see that show come to an end. And I, I was just, when the bishop died and everything, I was like, oh, come on. And I love him as actor as well. Like, yeah, and, yeah. and a lot of times people look at that type of storyline that the pastor was drinking and they were smoking mm. cigars and stuff like that. And I just want people to be able to not judge, but live your life, you know, live your truth of what you believe that God has called you to. Because I believe that when we are in the pulpit, we're ministering, you know, there's a place that we're supposed to be the light. But when we go back and to, by ourselves, I'm going to eat food, I'm going to. Enjoy myself. Mm. I'm gonna live life. And and talk I think to that's you like a lot of people yeah. forget to to live life because they think that you just gotta be, you know, one way all the time. No, I believe that you know we are still human. Mm. We're not in our glorified bodies yet, so we're subject sometimes to make mistakes. Yes, sir. But that's why the grace of God covers all of us. You know, yes, every sir. single time. So, um, what do you see yourself, TC, doing in the next, let's say, five years? What are you doing? Because you're still um, too, you're still too young right to now, retire. I'm, I'm not looking that far. I'm looking like. <laughs> year, year and a half ahead. And it's really about my music right now. Um, getting a little traction with that. And I think it's the place that I can make the next impact for what I'm trying to do as an artist. Yeah, I, I, I saw something of you on YouTube. I think you were at the City Winery or something. You were coming in from mm -hmm. the back and he came, he came as smooth a super <laughs> He came as smooth like this. You did when he said, good evening to everybody. They were, ah, ah, mm. Because I think they didn't realize, you know, really that with this voice, there is actually, actually a, a voice. Actually a voice, yes. You know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna lie, when I first saw you perform, like, you know, music-wise, I did see the play. I thought Mike was involved with the play. I apologize about that too, but I, when I first heard him sing, I was shocked. But my favorite thing about you, brother, which threw me under the bus, was I was just so hype about when I saw it, when I finally realized that you're Kratos. <laughs> Kratos yeah. is like the number one action star for the video game running to this day actually they coming out with a new god award which he's not still involved i don't think are you no i'm not um the last one that they did I, i'm not the voice of this new one i'm not the voice either gotcha yeah i thought so you stopped in like 2013 right that's when i think yeah. it changed all yes. the ones before that i yeah so I, yes exactly which is a big phenomenon in the gaming world i'm a part of that as well so definitely uh big respects for that you got a fan base alone just with that kratos is like <laughs> the guy yeah they're, right, so. they're funny they 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 get a little strange when they see me singing. They just, they go, Kratos sings? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. It's like, yo, that's Kratos, yo. <laughs> it would be awesome to see the video. If he would have broke out his song on a video game, it would have just 
<laughs> it went viral. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but TC, you are truly uh, an example, man, of even during conflicting times of what happened on, um, on your show, Living Single, as far as the writers and the differences that you guys had. But it still did not stop you, you know? And I think it speaks to your, your perseverance, your integrity, and uh, what you're willing to do and what you're, what you're not going to do, you know? Mm -hmm. Because in Hollywood, a lot of times people will just go left Roll in a minute over. and just do something else because mm -hmm. of that. But you stood firm. And um, talk about that, man. Talk about Hollywood and what that experience was for you and uh, what you would recommend for uh, up-and-coming actors that may be watching today. <laughs> you ain't got enough time for all that. <laughs> <laughs> we, got two, we got two minutes. <laughs> Oh, uh, the experience in Hollywood is is always a learning curve, especially when you don't come from that. Um, and I just tell people, make sure you really want to, what is your reason? Why are you doing what you're doing? Why do you want to be an actor? Why do you want to be a singer? Why do you want to be a dancer? It, are you doing it because you want to be famous and you want to make a lot of money? Mm -hmm. Or are you doing it because it's something inside of you and that's the thing that you have to be able to do. And when you do it, when it comes from that space, uh, eventually you'll get to the place where you want to be. Mm -hmm. And you'll be doing the thing, the thing that you love to do. What's the talent that you have that nobody knows about? Being so talented that you are. Because the singing already blew me out of my shoes when I first heard that. But what's something that you do that people would never like fathom? Do you sew? Are you a hell yeah, of a I used to cook? sew. I used to make my own clothes. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah. Okay, well, listen, man, I'm so glad that you came to stop with this, man. I really Thank appreciate you, your time. This is fantastic. Okay. Yo, of course, it's the world. I, I appreciate now. you Tisa having Carson. me on your show, Byron. I yes, wish sir. you the best yes, of luck in your series, man. I appreciate it, man. Please, man, tell everybody how they can contact with you on your Instagram, Facebook, all that good stuff. We'll follow they... you, not contact you. You don't want people calling them on. Right, right. And we'll, and we'll, and we'll put it up on the screen as well. So people will be able to but my call. Instagram and my website is official TC Carson. So the Instagram is official TC Carson. The website is official TC Carson .com. And then my Twitter and um, I think Facebook, all that's T.C. Carson. T.C. Carson. Okay, well, listen, my brother, thank you so much, man, thank for you, being brother. a part of the Byron Gate Show. I love you, my brother. I appreciate you, sir. Pleasure, and, sir. Yes, sir. Have a wonderful thank New Year. Thank you both. Yes, sir. I appreciate you. You all have a wonderful rest of your day. You thank too, you, sir. Thank Enjoy you. your thank day. You so thank you, appreciate sir. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Right. Peace. That's T.C. Carson, everybody, incredible actor, singer, all of those wonderful things. And uh, we're just appreciative that he stopped by to Absolutely. talk to us. You know, an incredible, incredible man. That was dope, man. Yeah, For yeah, me, yeah. especially growing up on a guy like that, man, it's good to see him still doing well. Absolutely. And, you know, the, the, the flames that he paved across the industry and the way he stood his ground as a man, yep. I can respect that. Yep. Like, like you said, though, you know, he, he was an example for, for men mm -hmm. of color to, yes, be sir. to be successful, to be articulate, yes, sir. and um, to, to make sure that you go after what you want in life, you know, because mm -hmm. he was always working. He was always, he was never a bum on the show. No, you know ever. And he was, like I said, he was quick with his responses, Absolutely. smart, Absolutely. very intelligent brother on the show, and I love that. I love Queen Latifah for creating something like that yeah. for us to see, yeah. and she's always been about that positivity and unity, of course, you and I, T.Y., hello. And she, you and I, T.Y. <laughs> <laughs> so she's always been along that lines, and I think he fits that as well, and it's just awesome that we had that at the time, because there were things to see. And we chose what we wanted to pick up. A lot of right. people picked up the negative things. A lot of people picked up, people picked up the spiritual things. But, you know, he kind of was that neutral ground, right. you know, just a strong man, just in his ways, did his thing, didn't bother nobody. And it was good to see. A lot of people picked up his image. I know a lot of brothers that had that T.C. Carson right. swag. Right. You right. know, right. I want to admit it. And, and he was really one of the first ones, too, to bring a fourth on, on television, that whole Afrocentric look. thing. Look, yes, that yes. whole Afrocentric uh, look. Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm talking about he's one of the first ones who did it, like, on prime, on prime time, time television. TV. Yes, he did. So, yes, he did. Um, again, you all, T.C. Carson's amazing. Go, go follow him on his Instagram, his Facebook, all that good stuff. Man, he's a good man. Stick right here on the Byron Cage Show. We'll be right back. Peace. It has occurred to me that you don't say to get to see me. No, you don't. You don't to want to see me. It has occurred to me that you don't to know you don't see me. To, uh -uh. to you don't to want to see me. It has occurred to me that you don't. <laughs> to 
see me to know you down, you don't don't wanna see me. It has occurred to me that you don't say so can't see me to get you well, you don't don't wanna see me. Oh, you don't see me when I am trying to do right, maybe you can see me now, yeah. You don't see me when I am trying to do right, maybe you can see me now, yeah. When I was walking, had my feet on the pavement, really truly trying to find a gig. Did you stand up, speak out in my favor? No desperation, cheeks a devil in bed, scratching till my bones are fair. Pills and needles are all I've left to save. You don't see me when I am trying to do right, maybe. You can see me now, yeah. Set to get to do that, to do that, to do that. You don't see me when I am trying to do right, maybe. You can see me now, yeah. The body you do, do, do. We were walking, and I told you over how my shoes are wearing thin. You took your surplus and traded for a favor. I'm demented, I'm burned, I'm to a cinder. Forty hours buys a grocery bag for trash. You don't see me, you don't see me, and I'm tired of trying to attract your attention. Ain't no sunshine when she gone It's not warm when she's away Ain't no sunshine when she gone And this house just ain't no home Every time she goes away I wonder this time where she gone Ooh. She got me wondering if she's gone to stay Cause ain't no sunshine when she gone And this always gone too long Anytime she goes away I know, 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 I would leave that young thing alone, but ain't no sunshine when she gone. Ain't no sunshine when she gone, no. Only darkness every day, yes. No sunshine when she gone And this house just ain't no home Every time she goes away She got me wondering this time Where she's gone, oh yeah She got me wondering if she's gone to stay uh, Cause ain't no sunshine when she gone And this house just ain't no home Every time she goes away I know, 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 I would leave that young thing alone, but ain't no sunshine when she gone. Ain't no sunshine when she gone. The clouds roll in when she's gone. 